All right, so uh, we saw that the way we're doing this is we start the whole setup to take a photo. We, we write the path to the photo in the input field. And then ultimately, that's read and saved into the database. OK, so we've got a path to a photo. To display it on screen, if you recall, you can go back to the index.html file for a moment. We have in our PG view comics info in HTML at about line 191, we have a paragraph right there. We've got paragraphs for all of these items to display. We had hanging around a paragraph for an image that has no source and has a class. So by that class, we're going to style this a little bit. And we can also use that class for uh, JavaScript purposes if we want. Well, our, our thing that we need to do here is we need to fill that source dynamically with the path to that photo. So that's already there. We wrote that a while ago, sometime at some point. But there's no path. So the way we're going to fill that in is back in the JavaScript. We have a whole block where we've got eq colon or EQ parentheses. We've got a couple of spots. If you do Control F and search EQ parentheses, we've got two spots where we have this, where we did this that we targeted um, with jQuery uh, the equality of something. Specifically, line 2429, here's where we've said, OK, we've got a div view comics info. There's a paragraph. Well, we're talking about paragraph that equals 0, the first paragraph. We'll write the title. And we've got paragraph equal 1. The second paragraph, that's where we're writing the number, etc., etc. And look at that. We were pretty smart. And we started over here, what we're going to do eventually. Because this would make sense in an EQ6, sort of. But not really, because we're not actually trying to write HTML into the sixth or seventh paragraph. This is what we wrote a while ago, and I said, let's just write it, and let's comment it, and trust me for the moment. So here's where my trust comes back. This line we're going to uncomment, which is line uh, 438 or so. And this is what we wrote a little while ago. And let's break this down. Again, the jQuery selector, we're going to select, we're going to find or target something. A div with a unique identifier. A paragraph, the seventh paragraph, because we start from zero. The image in the seventh paragraph in the div. So again, reading it to right to, right to left is how I would recommend to read this. An image, space, inside of the seventh paragraph, space, inside of a div with this ID. We're not writing HTML. We're setting an attribute, ATTR. We're setting the attribute of this image source to the photo property of the success object, which is our comic. The path to the photo is being set to the source attribute in the image in the seventh paragraph. If you want to be completist, you can remove that comment right there, currently non-existent currently not non-existent. In other words, currently existent. And that was just a comma. Uh, that was just a comment. Doesn't matter. But definitely uncomment line 438 or so, wherever yours is. It's the one that said equals 6. Uncomment that line. In the seventh paragraph, the image attribute source set to the photo. Obviously, photo is the property of the comic. If we had called it anything else, like picture, we didn't call it picture, did we? What did we call it? I'm already doubting myself. Barcode. No, we called it photo. When we created temp comic, we called it photo. So then <coughs> success.photo would be the reference to that um, property.
before we test it, we've also got a class in the HTML. Or a question? It's not the photo itself. It's the path to the photo, yes. So we've got in the HTML also the the class of comic image. That's a class for JavaScript or CSS. Let's go to our uh, CSS file and define a little CSS to target the image that we're eventually going to insert. So we'll create a new CSS rule to target this image. Let's open index.css in your CSS folder. We'll go to the very end of your code. We'll add dot comic img. Since it's a class, uh, pound signs are for the IDs, and dots are for the class. So here we're saying, wherever we've got a class in our project of comic img, we want it to um, conform to the size of its parent container. We've got an image inside of a paragraph inside of a div. So here, we're saying 100% the width of its parent container wherever we have this class. And at the moment, we've only got it in one place, so it would almost work as, a, as an ID. But if we display this picture in other places, and we also use the same class, anywhere where that picture is with this class will be affected. So now try saving it and running it. And if you go directly to view comic, if you have taken a photo of, of something, and you go to info, the little info bubble, you should now see the photo you took. If not, you can do the whole thing. Take a photo of a brand new comic, save the info, and then view the comic, and you should see the, the photo appear on screen. photo will appear when we click the speech bubble under the view comic info. So after that, you should see the the photo of the comic that you took, and now it's in that in and now it's in that info screen. There's the photo. Did you do you see your photo on screen? So that's uh, 
Pretty clever right there. We set the attribute of that empty. We set the attribute of that empty image. <laughs> Thank 
Because we're using yeah. we're using yeah. strings on the gifts. The yeah. function should exist before we want to that handle. Oh, okay. So we're trying to call a function it's that does this. Yeah. If you wrote it first, if we wrote it after this, we're trying to call it that your mom exists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So simply the variables are first because we need the variable to exist, so that then we can use it for time to Question? Yes.
All right, everyone. We'll do one more little fun thing, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up for the day. So the um, the photo currently appears. This will be your this will be your pop quiz. 
the photo appears in the info screen. Uh, the first person to figure out how do we add a cool drop shadow behind our photo? Try it out, raise your hand, and you'll get 10 victor points. <laughs> So we have a photo, we have a photo that is appearing in the info screen. How do we add a drop shadow to that photo? That's part of the answer, yes, CSS. We need somehow to add shadows to things in CSS. If, I did, if I'm not telling you now, maybe we can possibly look it up. How do I add a shadow to something in CSS? More than zero. Is there a thing called a photo shadow? Not quite. Something like that. Box shadow. That sounds familiar. Box shadow. We might have done that like in part one of the class. So if in the JavaScript we are writing the, the image somewhere, you might go backwards and say, okay, where is that somewhere? And that somewhere is an image in the HTML. In the HTML, I've got an image. And there's the source that is being set. Does that give you a clue? OK, well, if I've got an image, I'm going to control it or affect it or target it or select it via CSS. So that takes, o takes us over to the CSS file. CSS's purpose is design and style and uh, visual aspect of the project. So you're done? You got it? Yeah. Oh, Isaac yeah. beat you. Well, let's see if it's right. Let's see if it's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to go fuzzy your mic up nice, but that's good. You already did? Where did you put it? The CSS one? Oh, you looked at it. So it is CSS. Uh, Isaac and Irina tied over here. They both got uh, 10 victor points. Uh, now 1,000 equals one real point. So you just need a few more. So the answer is over here. We have comic image. Well, here's one possible answer. There's always different ways to do it, of course. But here's one possible way. We've got our comic image class in CSS. This is what's attached to the particular image here. We've got an image with a source, with a class. So in CSS, we can add a new property here, box-shadow, colon. And then the way this works is um, <coughs> you provide a color. Um, X and Y offset and inset, which that one's new to me. But you, look, you want a color, <laughs> you want X and Y, and that'll give you a drop shadow. So let's say color black space 10 pixels, maybe, and then 10 pixels. 
semicolon. That's interesting here. It shows it in terms of color, then x and y offset. And usually, well, I've always seen it, and I learned it that it was the uh, x and y first, and then the color. I guess the order doesn't matter. So color. And here also they're doing with transparency in the example, RGBA. So black, 40% visible to see the background color. 10 pixels move to the right, 10 pixels move down. There's inset 2. So either or. I would have written it 10px, 10px, um, you know, black. Or you could do RGBA to have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.5 percent. So that will create a drop shadow moved over 10 pixels to the right. 10 pixels down, 50% transparent black. Try one more here. Uh, I won't explain this one. Just try it. If you know what it is, don't shout it out. Just try it. And uh, we'll wrap up at this point. And uh, I'll put my code in the folder in just a moment. Um, so we've done a lot with our project. When we come back on Tuesday, we're getting closer and closer to getting it complete for version 1. I expect that we'll have a version 1 and a version 2. Because at a certain point, we have to reach what is known as MVP. We want our app to reach MVP. What does MVP stand for? Minimum viable product. Minimal viable product. Most of you probably say MVP, right? Yes, our app will be an MVP, most valuable player. But it will also have a minimal viable product, meaning we can keep adding and adding and tweaking and changing forever. And then our app never launches. What is the minimal viable product that we can create? Right now, it's good. It can save comics, edit the comic, take a photo, do the barcode, delete the comic, delete the whole database, users log in, log out. That sounds pretty minimal. You know, well, it was you know 800 lines of code, but we were at a point we, we could possibly think about releasing version 1 or 0 0.1 or whatever we want to call it. So I expect we'll get to version 1. We'll then shift gears a little bit about creating the developer's account to, to publish it to an app store. Then I want to do version 2, add a few more things. So in this class, I want to go through the whole thing, not just the code, but creating the account, publishing it, creating a store listing, beta testing it with people, uh, promoting it, version 2. No, that's next week. And uh, we'll pick it up at that point. So, um, uh, to do MVP, minimal viable product.